Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Guidus TV. I am a guest host. Uh, this is my first time on Guidus TV. I am uh, very happy, thrilled, and I consider it a great privilege to be with Sheikh Eustace uh, on his TV. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, the significance of Guidus TV uh, as a channel that has informed, educated, and enlightened Muslims worldwide about their deen, about their faith, about the message of Islam. And we are also dis going to discuss to what extent the state of Delaware needs Guidus TV and what Guidus TV can bring uh, to the state of Delaware. So I have with me here Sheikh Yusuf Yustis. Assalamu alaikum. And I also have with me Dr. Navid Bakhar, who is from Delaware, and he's going to try and make the case that Delaware will definitely benefit from Guidus TV. So, Sheikh, before we go forward, there was a question that I always wanted to ask you. Do you think of yourself as a Muslim televangelist? Oh, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> I don't even know that I was much of a Christian evangelist, much less in Islam. But I do consider that we should be using every mode possible to get the message of one God of Islam to the people. Well, in that sense that you are using modern available technologies for doing dawah, mm -hmm. that is the purpose. But uh, why this medium? Why this medium? How is this medium different from the traditional mediums in which we did dawah, which was face to face, one on one? One of the things that I like is the legitimacy. Whenever you have something, a television station, it's a lot more than, than when you say you have a Facebook page, for instance. But we do have as many people on the Facebook pages, maybe, as we do for some of our programs. And that's also true in the Twitter and some of the other social media that's out there. Uh, you were familiar with me a little earlier playing around with that Snapchat thing that we have. And you also know about LinkedIn and some of the other areas of explanation and talking about what our personal lives are, what we're doing, what we're all about. That's a sharing kind of an idea. The television on the other hand, gives an air of authority. It has a position in people's minds as well as in their homes that this is something a little bit bigger, a little bit more serious. And so that is one of the premises for bringing it to the television level. Then after that, you have what method of television we're gonna use. There is television on the internet. We've had that for years. But in addition to that, to have a satellite, that's something pretty big. Our particular satellite, Galaxy 19, covers all of Canada, all of the United States, even parts of the Caribbean, and out to Bermuda. So we have the ability, we won't say we have every single home, obviously, but we have the ability to reach any home, of course, that has the receiver to catch the dish to catch the satellite. After that, the apps are really a very important part of what we're doing. Now you're coming back closer to the internet kind of concept when you have your phone in your hand, you can do a lot of things with these modern phones. One of them is that you can text message, you can send a link that somebody could click and then see what's going on, or instead of trying to use that, it could use the app, the application that we have, lets you actually watch Guidus TV right on your phone, as well as see our, our other areas of interest such as the Islam Newsroom, Islam Events. These are websites that we've had for years, but now they're available in app form and you can use it that way. But when you're talking about this, you're not really getting the essence of having that TV in your home, that 60 inch screen that's there real big, and then seeing some high definition stuff. So clearly, the, the, there are people who make the argument that the medium is the message itself. So in that sense, for example, if you if the, the advantage that you're getting it by using the television technology is perhaps the size of the screen uh, and maybe also this this perception of gravitas that this is something a much more serious enterprise than someone anyone having a Facebook page and uploading it's homemade more videos. Costly, there's no yes. doubt about that. Yeah. So but what what additional uh, shall we say what does it add to the content of your message itself? I don't know that we could say that it adds anything more than what we might be able to achieve with a website or the Facebook and things like that, except there's a consistency that's expected there. 
But there is something, and this is one of the things that we're really focusing on, it's an outreach in a place where the other things can't go. We have become number one in the prisons across America for the Muslim inmates. And many of the prisons are open and even happy to have our town broadcasting there. For number one, it calms down the prisons. They don't feel like they're cut off so bad from their faith. Yeah. And we're able to talk to them in levels that they can understand. Because one of the formats of our programs is that we don't want to take anything higher than about a sixth or seventh grade education. The reason for that is because we keep in mind that a lot of our followers, our viewers, are second language, English. Okay. And the other thing is that a lot of our youth are watching and we want to reach them. You, as a professor in a university, could still understand it. It's real simple <laughs> English. If I try hard. <laughs> you have to give a little. Yeah. But at the same time, anybody else watching will get the same message. Six-year-old children five-year-old children come up to me all the time and say, I like this show that you had. I, I really enjoyed the stories of the prophets. And they like the story about the one who came to Islam and the big 30,000 crap. Many of the things that they talk about. Now, we know we're reaching them. There's another issue, too, that when you're talking with government agencies, they appreciate what we're doing and they watch it themselves to see, you know, what are they saying? And then they come away, hmm, that was pretty good. I've had FBI agents even tell me that I need to spread my effort into more of the masajid, the mosque here in America. And uh, I told my wife, I said, if the FBI likes it, maybe I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> but <laughs> seriously, I, I want to come back to the idea that all of us have different ways of looking at information that comes to us. We know that there are certain limits. We know that there are certain rights, but how we perceive those. And if it comes to us through television, this media that we're on right now, if, we, if this is the way and people say, mm -hmm, I saw it on TV, must be correct. There's another area too we mentioned about the prisons. Hospitals also will show our free-to-air programs because we're on antennas in these different areas along with the satellite. And what happens is somebody that's a patient is laying there on the bed for 24 hours a day they get tired of the commercials, infomercials, and things. They start popping this. Huh? And when they do, they wind up in a place they never would have gone by choice. They would have never said, let me go look up Islam today. But all of a sudden, it's on the screen, and they go, hey, what's this all about? And a bishop from the Christian church came to Islam exactly this way. We recently had a theologian from the Catholic church come to Islam, all in the same year. We've had a number of pastors clerics from other religions come to Islam or at least encourage us to keep it going. They like it and they're showing it to their parishioners and to their congregations. Well, clearly the, your message is very powerful and that's why it's popular. There are millions of viewers uh, and followers uh, worldwide. Uh, I want to ask a question, Professor Barker, and what is the appeal of Guidance TV to you? I think it is one of those rare mediums uh, that have the ability to, to create a new generation of Muslim, uh, Muslims who will not have fear of media, who will not be fearful if a camera is put in front of them, they would be able to speak uh, their minds and would be able to convey the message and their, their heartfelt feelings uh, to, to the masses. Right now the situation is that you put a camera in front of uh, a Muslim community member and there is hesitation because we don't know how to speak, how to, so if our children have a model that, okay, this is how these things are done, I think we are not just serving the current generation, we are serving the future generation. But how does watching TV give them that much empowerment? I mean, they watch TV all the time anyway. The average uh, screen time these days that the kids have, given their iPads and iPhones, is about nine hours a day, apparently. Kids, oh, my God. Nine hours a day, kids are staring at screens of some kind or the other. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, it's nine hours a day. And, so, and that presents a challenge. That presents a challenge that, uh, that as a Muslim community, you know, uh, one of our responsibilities is to, to also uh, teach our children the, the deen. Now, how do we do that? 
you know. Well, when before that, let's take a quick break, and then I'll come back, and we'll continue with the conference. Thank you. We went